in this brief lecture we are going to talk about green manuring and what is the difference between green manuring green leaf manuring brown manuring live mulch and what are the different crops or different plants they are used for green manuring what is the use of green manuring how it is relevant in agriculture all the things will cover in this brief lecture so what is green manuring and how it is being done green manuring is basically uh, the manuring of green plants that means the plants itself raised in the field and it is being incorporated in the farm itself or field itself for manuring okay for decomposition manuring means basically in manuring what we do we you collect different uh, crop residue as well as animal exc excreta and we use certain technique to decompose it faster rate effectively okay so that it will be simplified from complex biomolecule it will be simplified and it will provide nutrient to the crop or it will improve the physical property as well as different soil health uh, in that particular area where we are applying that that thing so that is manuring but in green manuring what what is being done in green manuring the crop is itself grown in the field and before it reaches uh, a certain stage that means or flowering or maybe uh, early pod development stage before it reaches that uh, that phase we need to incorporate that in the field why we need to incorporate that in the field because if we are not incorporating that in the field and yes most importantly the green manuring crop we take that that should be a nitrogen fixing crop if that is a nitrogen fixing crop then what will the extra advantage that it can by the time we incorporate the field that can fix atmospheric nitrogen in the soil and uh, most of the leguminous plant uh, they are having low cn ratio their stem is having or their residue is having low cn ratio so the decomposition rate will be faster and most of the leguminous crop they their nitrogen contained in the biomass that is also higher so we must preferably select a green manure crop from leguminous family okay and while we are incorporating that in the in the soil uh, what will happen as the uh, green manuring crop we are taking the leguminous crop so uh, as that is having low cn ratio so it will be decomposed faster and it will provide the nutrient earlier okay so let's discuss the uh, concept incorporation of uh, on decomposed part of the soil part of the plant in the soil to be used as manure is called green manuring that means the live plants we have to raise and the undecomposed part of the plant that is being incorporated in the soil that is the concept of green manuring and such material is called a uh, such method is called green manuring and that is basically two types green manuring is basically two type one is green manuring in situ and another one is green leaf manuring so in green manuring in situ what happens we in in a certain field in a certain farm or certain field we raise the green manuring crops and uh, before uh, its vegetative uh, before its uh, fl flowering stage uh, starts or early pod development starts we need to incorporate we, we will incorporate that in the field itself we will we'll just flood the water there and we just incorporate that in the field so uh, that will decompose over there so that is called in situ green manuring that means in that particular area we are incorporating the field or we are doing the green manuring practice another one is green leaf manuring where there is no provision of land vacation vacant to grow the green manuring crop or uh, green manuring or where there is no optimum suitable uh, condition for raising a green manure crop and uh, incorporating there so we need to import different green residue or uh, residue from other field or the field bonds or some other area and that residue we are incorporating in our field then that is called green leaf manuring that is green manuring ex situ so green manuring in situ mostly followed in north india example of green manuring in situ crop dhoincha sonhem uh, cowpea these are this can be used as green manuring in situ crop then green leaf manuring that is the incorporation of green leaves along with twigs and incorporation in field before planting and that is being in, important from outside and uh, it is most commonly uh, used in eastern and central india so, for example neem mahua corange water hyacinth apomia cassia these are uh, considered as green leaf manuring crop like neem and mahua corange these are mainly grown in field bonds and the forest 
then water hyacinth you, you will find ipomia cassia water hyacinth ipomia you will find in aquatic bodies or submerged condition or the water log situation then cassia you can find in um, different field bonds okay so these are being act as green leaf manuring crop then characteristics of gm crop or green manuring crop first should be the ideal characteristics of green manuring crop as i was discussing that to, that should be a leguminous crop and some other characteristics are like quick growth if the green manuring crop is quick growing ability then it will be incorporated it will grow faster rate and it will be incorporated in the short period time after that there will be enough time left for land preparation and further sowing of our major crop then it should be deep rooted crop so that it can extract more water more nutrient from the deeper layer of the soil then it should be succulent stem so that the cn ratio is less and it will be easily decomposed higher leaf production if the biomass production is higher it can add more organic matter to the soil it can add more nutrient to the soil then uh, can survive under extreme weather condition okay then preferably nitrogen fixing or leguminous crop okay then gm crop green manure crop can tolerate water logging and salinity which green manure crop can tolerate both water logging and salinity that is dhoincha that is cespania rostrata another peculiar characteristic of dhoincha is uh, it's it is a uh, diazotrope that means it can fix atmospheric nitrogen uh, in uh, and nodule it can nodulate in stem as well as root so it can fix atmospheric nitrogen by stem as well as root also so it is a it is also called diazotrope then decomposition rate of green manure crop mostly depends on cn ratio lignin and polyphenol content so why we need to incorporate in early vegetative stage because if it reaches flowering and pot development stage the lignin and polyphenol content will be higher which will be which is uh, more prone to you know more resistant to decompose that means uh, if the lignin and polyphenol content in the crop residue is higher then uh, microbes that is the bacteria fungi actinomycetes that uh, decompose help in decomposition process so their activity they cannot act properly on the on that biomass because the lignin polyphenol these are lignin and polyphenol these are uh, resistance to decomposition or degradation so green manure crops should be low in cn ratio and it should be low in lignin and polyphenol content as well then what is brown manuring how it is different from green manuring and green leaf manuring in green manuring we just discussed that we are raising the crop in the field in green leaf manuring in situ we are raising the crop in the field and we are incorporating after a certain age in green leaf manuring we are collecting the green uh, green leaves or green uh, biomass from other part of the other field or other uh, ecosystem then we are incorporating that in our field that is green leaf manuring then in brown manuring what we do we uh, sow or broadcast the green manuring uh, crop in the direct seeded rice crop mostly mostly in direct seeded rice crop there is more prevalence of weed because there is no standing water so we just uh, broadcast the green manuring crop in the standing rice uh, field then after 25 to 30 de uh, days after sowing we just kill uh, that uh, green manuring crop because they are broad leaves so we can apply the 2,4-D ethyl ester for quick knockdown 2,4-D ethyl ester we can use then bispide back sodium we can use to knock down that green manure crop so these are selective herbicide and they will not affect the rice plant so uh, what will happen in this way so basically we are uh, desiccating those green manuring crop and by the time of 25 to 30 days it, it will fix some atmospheric nitrogen as well and it after desiccating that leaf will fall in that particular area and the stem will fall or fall in that particular area. so this is called brown manuring because after uh, application of the uh, herbicide that uh, biomass or the plant parts will will become uh, the brown brown color so that is also called brown manuring and by uh, as they are growing in the space available in in between the rice row, rice crop a plant to plant or row to row distance so they will restrict the growth of the weed as well so this 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 can act as live mulch as well so this is the concept of brown manuring then live manuring or live mulch what is that so if we are taking any intercrop in between the two rows of cereal or two rows of white dispersed crop like maize if we are growing green gram in those two area in the in, in between area then that is called live live mulch effect or live manuring effect so it will 
fixed atmosphere nitrogen it will uh, suppress the weed growth and if we are cutting the those and we are just spreading over the soil then also it will decompose gradually not so faster but gradually it will decompose and it will suppress the weed growth as well so that is live plant effect or live mulch okay so this is all about green manuring what is the difference between green manuring green leaf manuring and brown manuring and as well as live mulch uh, 